But see, we don't. Let me let me tell you something, Michelle. Let me let me just stop you right there. We we don't do interviews over here. We have conversations. That's that's what All we right. do. That's what we do. We we having a sit down. We talking. We chilling. That's what we do yeah. over here on the Lockout Man Podcast Show. That's why the best conversations starts over here. You know what I'm saying, Michelle? Yes. In the building. How you doing today, little lady? I am doing good. I'm doing better now. I'm on the line with you. I'm doing good. All right. I appreciate you coming on and uh, chopping it up with us. I understand that you guys is busy and everything. So giving me that time, I really do appreciate it. Uh, Before we start, uh, there we go. Before we start, Michelle, let's start with uh, let's start with the bad story of of yourself leading up to uh, the start of Three Rivers uh, Trucking Academy. Wow, I'll give you the short version. (laughs) All right, all right. (laughs) All right, so um, the short version is um, about about seven years ago, my my oldest son, our oldest son, got um, arrested for armed robbery. And um, we were truck drivers, um, as we always have been. And we decided that there needed to be something done for him, um, that when he came home, he didn't have to kind of flip burgers to make sure that he still had a future even though he made a mistake Mm -hmm. so um we just decided after visiting him one day we saw a little kid singing happy birthday to his father because his father was on um confinement so he couldn't come out and hug him so this little kid was singing happy birthday to his dad behind the glass uh window and i went home that night and i said i told my husband i said we got to change and if i can't do nothing but change for one of them and I've done my job. So Three Rivers Truck and Sue was born out of my son's agony of um, being in the worst prison in Georgia. So out of his agony, we birthed the truck and sue to train at felons how to um, drive trucks and get their CDO license and put them to work. Oh. That's the short version. All <laughs> right. All right, man. Well, I am so sorry that, you know, that happened to your family. Is 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 he out now or is, is he still in? Yeah, he's still in. We still got a year and two months to go. Oh, okay. So um, we got 14 months, and we should be having him home. Okay, okay. So you and your husband was truck drivers prior to starting the school. Yes, yes. My husband's been driving um, for 34 years. He was grandfather in with the chauffeur license. Mm-hmm. So he's been driving since he was about 16, 17 years old. And matter of fact, when he got his CDO license, he had to go back to school to actually – do the um, actual CDL course because it was a grandfather rule where if you had a chauffeur license, you automatically had a CDL. Right. And um, yeah, so he's been driving for a minute and then he trained me almost 11 years ago. He trained his mother who is now like um, 68. He trained her how to drive, his whole family. A lot of his family members have learned from him. So he's been a trainer his whole life. And so he trained me and I just figured I didn't always want to be a driver. I wanted to use my license to help people. So we, um, I just knew that it wasn't for me to be behind the wheel the whole time. There was something more to this. Have yeah. you, have, have, uh, have you guys, uh, train, uh, not trained, but have you guys teamed, uh, while, you know, while y'all, while y'all was out, you know, driving together? Um, yeah, we teamed the whole time. I never drove by myself. So a lot of times when I tell people, um, it's funny because when we have students come in, they always ask me about other companies and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I can't give them a lot of information about companies because I've always worked for my husband. Okay. So I've always team drove for him. He always owned trucks. So I don't really know a lot about the company side unless with you know, unless interviewing the companies and talking to them. But we kinda have a knack for training people to be their own boss because that's how I came into the industry. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So so being that you had your CDLs and you you pretty much was just, you know, with your with your husband and everything, you have you ever drove for a company or no? I um I drove for one company that we were leased on to. So the company didn't like it was our truck and mm-hmm. we leased it under their authority. Okay. And so it's a yeah, so we owned the tractor, but we would just strictly pull their commerce and under their authority. Okay, so this uh, th- th- this is your husband, right? That that did all the training to for for everybody in his family, including his mother. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> wow. You mean to tell me the moms was interested in getting into trucking? Yeah, yeah. She and, and matter of fact, she got her license when she was like fifty. Man, and she got trained by the by her son. Shout out to your old man for that, <laughs> man. That's that's wow. Okay, okay, that's what's up. Now, Michelle, yep. let's let's talk a little bit. Uh, let, let's talk about a little bit about the school. Um, from what I understand, and from what you know, from what I from what I read about you guys, you you guys are the first black uh trucking school <laughs> so we are the first female female black owned trucking black school owned trucking in- school that's what i meant i'm sorry <laughs> yep we are the first ones um in georgia to be owned um and and when i say owned is because i own 75 percent of the company so okay. um we're the first female lead owned um truck driving school in the state of georgia Okay, so give me a little bit. Uh, give give me a little bit of uh uh of of the school itself. Like, how uh how do you know how do we find you guys? How how much is it for training? How long is the training? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so our training goes about two 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 and a half weeks. Okay, so we can take you if you have a permit or if you don't have a permit. Mm-hmm. So if you have the permit, we can kind of pull you in, start you right onto the blacktop. Um, and that way it can narrow it down to about to about just that two weeks because you've already done the first week of training, which is getting your permit. And then um, if you don't have a permit, it's a little over two and a half weeks where we bring you into the classroom. We get you all the classroom training on your general knowledge, your air brakes, your combination. And then we put you out to the blacktop where you're out there for exactly 14 days and you're learning how to drive the truck, um, how to do all the back and maneuvers required by the state. And then after you graduate, we do a, um, a mock-up test, what we call here. And so we would pretend to be examiners and we put you under the fire where we're kind of like strict with you to make sure you can pass the test. And then we take you on to take the test whenever your test date is. The one thing um, about us though is particularly is we allow our students to come back so they can do like a refresher. So we do allow the students to come back at least about three days before the test. And we allow them to come back, kind of get in the truck with the other students, kind of walk through that again. Because sometimes with the state of Georgia right now, our test dates have been so far in between. So we got to make sure that we keep our, our passing rate up high. We allow the students to come back, kind of refresh with the other students that are in there now, kind of get behind that wheel again, get that pre-trip going, get your juices flowing in that. And then they're ready to take the test. Okay. okay. That's one of the best things about us. And then the other thing is most of the schools won't take you here fresh out of prison. The one thing about us, because we're independent, we can take anybody. So the moment you come home, if you want to drive the truck, we can start you training the very next day. Okay. That's what's up. Now, you know, Mm -hmm. I want to break it down a little bit. Um, How hard or how difficult it was for you guys being you know, being a woman, being a minority, how hard was it for you guys to get your school started? <laughs> um, well, the story behind that would take forever, but I will say this. Um, number one, it was hard because when you, whenever you do something that you have to be the trailblazer, you're the first. So there's not a lot of people that I can go to and ask questions and that could answer those questions you know, honestly and appropriately to help me to the next level because it's some place that they haven't been. So um, that part was very hard, trying to find the information, trying to find people that are experienced in this area as a woman to help me, not just with the driving part, because that's a whole nother forte itself, but with being able to be compliant with the state of Georgia in that area. That's a, that's a whole monster by itself to be able to have that compliance and be able to have someone that knows about that compliance, knows about the curriculum. So for me, it was particularly hard because I was the first one and I didn't have anybody to go to and kind of shadow or mentor and say, can you help me with this? So I just had to do a lot of, I'm not going to lie to you, a lot of praying, a lot of Googling, a lot of a lot of sleepless nights trying to figure things out and a lot of mistakes. I had to make a lot of mistakes for the state to say, oh, you can't do this. And then I would go and say, well, tell me what I can do. If I can't do it this way, can you show me or can you assign someone to me to tell me how should I do it? 
so that I would know, you know, the right way. A lot of times it was just trial and error and I would have to tell them, I'm not trying to break the law. I just, I'm trying to help people, but I need you to show me how you want me to help them exactly. so that I'm not breaking the law. So a lot of this was just trial right and way. error. Exactly. Show you the right way. That's that's what's up. And and it is kind of hard to, to to get people on board to see to see your vision and to see what you want to, you know, what you want to bring and what you want to do. And you know, with exactly. a lot of with a lot of roadblocks, you know, it, it, it seems as though like when 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 you you try to go independent, you try to you try to start things yourself and all like that, it looks like that you see more roadblocks than you see open roads you know it's it's not a problem for a, you know a, a you coming on to another person and be like yeah i'll bring you on this <laughs> this go gotta get you know this go and all like that i'll bring you on to this that and the third but yet when you break away and be like yo i want to do this myself now everybody don't want to be there for you but they want you mm-hmm. to be there for them though yep yep one of the greatest things I've learned in this industry and moving into the teaching part of this industry is you got to be okay with being the first and you got to be okay with being by yourself. You just got to, because not everybody understands this. And let me make sure that I'm really clear on this. We so down with this to the point where when I, when I talk to people about my vision for these people coming home. A lot of people love the conversation, but when it came time to get your hands dirty, people kind of backed up. Like, wait a minute, we got to do that? Mm-hmm. I-, I thought it was just, you know, you just wanted me to give you a little bit of money or show face. I didn't know you really wanted this. So I had to, um, and what a lot of people don't know about us is a lot of the people that we um, helped coming home from prison, we picked them up. We picked them up from prison. We picked them up from their parents' house the week after they got out of prison. We took them shopping. We brought them clothes, brought them shoes. We put money on their books. Like, we, we did this for real. We was buying green dot cards. We did everything we needed to do to let this young man or woman know that we're here and we're serious. And not only that, when we picked them up, we brought them to our house. So we revamped our entire basement to afford these men and women a place to live safely so that they can actually practice and get on with their life. So we didn't just talk about it. Like we put these people in our home. We fed them. We ate with them. Like we really was about that business and we still about it, you know? So it wasn't just, uh, you, 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 I mean, wow. I mean, you, you really had to, you really had to, had to put faith, had to put trust in the bringing, you know, Mm -hmm. bringing a stranger, you know, especially out of prison, you know, considering the situation that they did into your own home and be like, look, I want to help you and we're here for you. But have you, have you ran into any guys that, I don't know, that was hard to help that, 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 that couldn't be helped? I wouldn't say couldn't be helped. I would say hard. Everybody can be helped. But it sometimes it takes a little bit of um, I, you got to be like that fox, so you got to use a little bit of wisdom to be able to get them in. Because people know they need the help, but they just don't know they need it from you. They don't know you're the one that has to bring it. So a lot of times, people are looking for the help to come in other areas or other other faces, people that don't look like them. But it's um that time when you got to show them I look just like you and I want to help. I'm brown skinned and just like you, and I want to help. Because a lot of times people think that help only comes from people with blue eyes and blonde hair. But there are people in our community that really is like, we want to help and we don't want nothing back. We want to put you on the front door. We want to elevate you. We want to help you. And we have been in situations where I had to learn this. First of all, these people that come home, they don't belong to me. Okay? First and foremost, they don't belong to me and my husband. They're not our children. They are grown men that we need to help. And what that means is once we help them, we got to let them go. We cannot stand over them. We can't push them. We can't make them do anything. That's first and foremost. So once there's a level of respect there, then that level of respect is given back to me. And I understand that I can't make them do anything they don't want to do. So I have to be willing to help. And if they don't want the help, it's okay. Maybe I can help them a different route. I can do something different. Maybe truck driving is what they thought they wanted to do inside. Because it sounds good, you know, traveling, you're in this four by four cell for the last 10 years. So being able to get behind the road and just go sounds good. 
but then you're not really prepared for the commitment it's going to take when you get outside. And so I've got to be okay if they say, no, I can't push this any further. And we've had that happen where um, a young man quit the program. He came back, but he quit the program for like three months. And he went and got a job at a warehouse. And he was like, I can't do it. This is not what I want to do. I don't want to be working for anybody. I want to be my own boss. And we let him right back into the program to finish, to get his license and everything. But one of the greatest things he ever said to me was he was like, I was sitting in the room with the people over the warehouse and they said the same stuff you said to me. And I said, what you, what you mean? He said, you remember that day you had that conversation when you, with me and you told me that you might not want to kiss people, but, but until you get where you're going, you got to be the butt kisser. Until you actually make that leverage and make weight and make room up in this industry, then you don't got to kiss butt. But until then, it's always going to be somebody you got to bow down to. And you got to be willing to do that to get where you got to go. And he said, when those people said that to me, I immediately left that meeting. Like, I got to go back. I got to get my license. Like, this is the same stuff I'm going, no matter what industry I'm in, somebody's going to be ahead of me. And if I want to get there, I got to be able to bow down a little bit to get what they got. It's just not, they, nobody's going to hand me nothing. And so a lot of times um, people have to leave the program and come back. And then when they come back, they realize, okay, you were right. And we don't turn them away. I mean, who are we to say, you, you got the program, we don't want you no more. Come on, no. You just work it again, and now they understand and have a better understanding, and they're going to do better this time. All right, all right. Three Rivers Trucking School? Trucking Academy? Yep. Three Rivers Trucking School. Three Rivers Trucking School. Where where are you guys located at? Uh, we're in Winder, Georgia. Yep, Winder. We're probably about 20 minutes outside of Athens, but the physical address is 189 West Athens Street, Winder, Georgia. All right. Now, Michelle, let's let's talk a little bit. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the changes that's coming up next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Feb- in February, the FMCSA has definitely made some uh, some changes for the new drivers that's interested in coming in. How would that affect your school? Well, with our school, thank God, <laughs> we're on top of it, so we're ready. It's not a whole lot of changes for us. Um, it does put my assistants at a little bit of... Um, you know, a little bit of headache because they got it, our filing system has changed. That's the only real change for us um, is our filing system. Um, so we have to kind of do things now. We're on a time schedule. You know, things have to be turned in right away. And now everything, we have to add another step. So everything has to be processed through the SMCSA and then prepared for the students to test out. So what that means is um, normally we would be able to bring them in and just keep the files on hand or in a secured area for so many months. Well, now with the FMCSA being involved, we have to bring them in from the moment they come into the door, they're inside the FMCSA portal, okay? Mm -hmm. And so now their progress is reported to the FMCSA on a constant basis after every test, after every um, road test and different things like that. Then that progress is then met at the end of the two-week program, and then the FMCSA will probably give out a number or a file to your local DDS, and now the student is able to go test out. So it doesn't really change for the schools as much as people think. It just adds more process to the filing system. Okay, okay. So after a, after they get they after they get their license and all that, that of course they're gonna come back and say thank you. Uh, do you <laughs> do you guys help them with uh, with job placement? Now we do help them with job placement. We have recruiters that come up from. Um, now let me tell you a little bit about that part because that's important. We have recruiters on both ends. We have recruiters that come up from big, huge companies like Snyder, Warner. We have a lot of those recruiters come up. But then we also, we're probably the only independent school that we allow owner operators to come up and recruit. So we put them on the platform. We have them put out all their information. We have them have flyers, everything they need. And then we put them in front of the students, tell them on what are you going to give them. These students want to know, what what are you going to pay me for my work? Because even though they just out of school, you still need them. You know, so we try to set the owner-operator up so he knows, he or she knows that, hey, if you come in here and recruit, these are the things that you're going to need to answer. These are some of the questions that you need to have readily an answer for because these students are like wolves. They're going to pick through you to make sure that you're going to be honest about it. 
And we try to kind of pick through it a little bit. But we're probably the only independent school that allows both the um, bigger companies and the small company to come in and recruit their students. Okay, that's what's up. Uh, what, what's the uh, what's what's the fee like? So um, our fee is three thousand um, dollars, and we do that in payment plans. We do have an option where you can do a payment plan. Now, come March, we're going to go up to thirty seven fifty because because, of, of, because the- of the changes, right? Yeah. Now, let me, um, can I go back real quick about the changes outside of the school? Because a lot of people don't understand that part. Yeah. And that's the part that advocating about. So, um, part of the change is going to be, for instance, like right now, we have students that can come in with us that already have their permit. Right. So, they already have a permit and they can come and get trained. Mm-hmm. As of February 7th, if you do not have a permit before the 7th of February, you will have to go to a school and a certified school that's already listed in the FMCSA's portal. And then you would have to get the permit. Every test that you take has to be passed at an 80% or higher in order for you to make the test date for the permit by itself. Ooh. Now, the other changes, we used to be able to go into your local DDS and you would be able to add um, any type of endorsement on your license as far as your tankers, your doubles and triples, um, your hazmat. All of that, you used to you could just go in and add that. Right. Well, you can't do that anymore. Come February 7th, you will have to go to a school that's in the portal to be able to train on hazmat. You'll have to be trained on a tanker, and you'll have to be trained on doubles and triples before you add them onto your license as an endorsement. Oh, man. Man, so wait a minute. Let me mm-hmm. make sure. Let me let me make sure I get this right now. So if we don't have our our endorsements before February seventh, we 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 have to go and get trained on each endorsements now. Yes, if you want to add them. Does that require yes. money? Exactly. Oh my god. Mm. Exactly. Now, here's the thing that I also I try to tell people this, like, I'm not saying that this is a bad thing, because it's definitely going to help people as far as you're not just going to go get because remember, all of your state tests are multiple choice questions. Right. Okay, which is good for the student. But what about the student that is just guessing and they're just really smart? They don't know how to operate this trust, so they just guess all the right answers. Uh, and then they come in and get a and right. they take their schooling, but know nothing about a truck. They just guess their way through it. This is going to weed that out to make sure that you're hiring professional drivers. Number one. Now, this is just this is just me thinking this part. Let me make sure I put that out there. This is just Michelle thinking. I believe in the future, now that the SMCSA is involved in the schooling, I do believe that there will be some type of process to be able to look and see. So if there is a major accident, as we just had in Colorado, I believe now that they're going to be able to go back and see where this person received their license from. So if they can see, then now there may be, I'm not saying it will be, but there may be fines held accountable to the school if certain things were not taught. If certain things were not taught and they would just pass along. I believe so that's I believe coming. That I, I do. Exactly. I, I I do believe that's coming because uh, the 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 terrible accident in Colorado, you know, changed the outlook of trucking. If it hasn't mm-hmm. is if it hasn't, then it is now. You know, because it, yep. you know people need to be. You know, a lot of people saying that you know people need to be accountable from you know, of course, the driver himself, but you know, the company that he was driving for, for being forced to go out there into an area that he wasn't familiar with, you know, down to, you know, down to, you know, malfunction of, of, of the truck, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I I do foresee uh, that's coming in the near future. Yes. Yes. You don't know how many people that I've run into that we've trained. I'm not kidding. I can usually sit in the classroom without even knowing, seeing their paperwork. I know the one who has not been through our training process. When I get them on the lot, I can remember the ones who have not been through the training process 
of the classroom because when they come out there, the only thing they think about is driving. They just want to drive. Mm -hmm. They don't want to pre-trip. They don't want to do nothing. They want to they want to drive. Mm -hmm. Now, and I have to be the one to go, I get it. I know that's what you want to do. But if you don't get past this part, you're not driving anywhere. It doesn't matter how good you are. And I tell the students that 24-7, you could be the greatest driver I've ever known in my life. But unless you pass the preacher perspective, you're not driving anything. It doesn't matter how great you are. So you have to kind of, you get people so excited because they want to drive and that's great. But that safety has to be first. It has to be the most important thing about you because we teach these drivers, these students, that's how you make it home. So if you don't understand how to check your brakes, if you don't understand the warning signs before you have a brake problem, if you don't understand what an escape ramp is for, if you don't understand how to do controlled braking or sad braking, that's a problem putting you in the mountain and you don't understand how to break the truck down or how to revert around an object safely to get to the shoulder and then get yourself back onto the lane. That's a problem. So I believe that they will start to investigate where did you learn this? Did you pass this part of the test? That's why they want you to have 80% on those different sections to see, did you really learn this from the school? I do believe that will be questioned because you have so many people that will go and take the permit test on their own. And when I put them on the road, because we on the road every Monday. So if you come in and just say, you only been in class Wednesday, Thursday, let's say Friday. And we don't have classes on the weekend. So you only been in class one day and on Monday I put you on the road, but you got your permit already. I can guarantee you they don't know what to do. All they know is they know how to hit the gas to go straight. But if you tell them control brake, how far you need to be back on the car, like, hey, you're moving too close to him. If you can read the car's license plate, you're too close. Yep. You got to back up. How to tell them when you're coming up on the light, you don't need to try to beat this light. We don't know if this light is going to turn yellow. So slow it down, even if the light is green. These are things that these new drivers don't know yet. So you can tell right away that they're not ready. So it's our job at the school to caution them. Hey, I know you want to drive. I know you want to make the money because people have told you there's so much money out here. And that's what they're thinking about when they come in that door. Money, money, money. I got to take care of my family. But we all, Every CDL driver that has been through school, one thing we know is that every the good school safety is first. Yep. You got to learn this pre trip. You got to understand how to check these brakes, how to check that slack adjuster. You got to know to check your fluids every time you get fuel. It doesn't matter how long you've been driving. You need to check for air leaks. Nobody cares that you've been out there ten years if you're not safe. We don't care about that. We and we only time we're going to care about that is when something happens to you. But unfortunately, that's how the world is. Like when something big happens, oh, now we're concerned. But we should have been concerned when the driver was showing problems that they did not know how to check the brakes. They did not know how to use control braking or sad braking in emergencies and when to use them. I talk to so many students, they go, I don't know when you use sad brakes. And even in our drive portion, I say control brakes, control brakes. There's nothing in front of them, but we might be coming up on a light or a turn. And I need you to slow all the way down. Because the CDL manual says there's two times when you should downshift at the top of the hill and right before you enter a curve. So we have to constantly remind the students over and over and over again, this is not your car. This is a vehicle that has the ability to kill massive people. Another thing about us with safety is our students pre-trip our trucks every day for two hours or our trucks do not move. So from eight to 10, no truck moves on this lot until pre-trip has been done by every student. All right. Because it is an important part of why you're here. All right. Three, ri three Rivers Trucking School out of Georgia. Uh, if, you guys, uh, if you guys are ready, y'all better get ready now. You know what I'm saying? Because yes. big, big changes are coming. It, it, it is coming very very soon, very fast. I mean, Jan I mean, December is already gone. Next week will yeah. be next week will be January. What y'all waiting on? What are y'all waiting on? <laughs> y'all procrastinating. And then when uh, mm. and then when February rolls around here, y'all gonna be like, oh man, I wish I did this. Nah, nah ain't no more of that. FMCSA is up in the building now. They they ain't playing. They ain't playing yeah. with you. They ain't playing yep. with you. You know, they ain't making it easy 
like they did years ago with the grandfathered in chauffeur's license. They ain't playing with you. They stepping back in the building. They're tired. They're tired of seeing yeah. all of this, all of this destruction, all of this uh, uh, accidents. They're tired of that. So they stepping in the building and y'all say that it's, that they making it hard. FMCSA, FMCSA saying we're trying to make it safe. Uh, Michelle, thank you. Thank you very much for coming on and chopping it up with me. I really do appreciate it. You are a citizen. So if you ever, you know, if you got anything, you know, that you want to promote or anything like that, definitely reach out to the Lockout Man podcast show. The best conversation starts over here. You know what I'm saying? So I really appreciate yes. you coming up in here, man. Man, I appreciate you. Listen, guys, if you guys want to get your CDO license, look us up. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and TikTok at 3, the number 3, Rivers Trucking School. You can reach out to us by phone at 1-800-315-7022. Again, just give us a call, man. Holler at us. We're going to get you right. We're going to get you right. And, hey, just let you guys know. This is the first female-owned trucking school, <laughs> CDL trucking school, doing it right, doing it right. Do you guys take, uh, before you get up out of here, do you guys take anybody from anywhere, or do they have to be from Georgia? No, um, you can come from any state. We will include the housing inside of your um, tuition, so we'll package all that together. We have some good rates with hotels in our area. So um, we'll package that all together to provide you the hotel and everything. So you do not have to live in Georgia to go through our program. All right. Oh, one last thing. I know I forgot to ask. Uh, you know, it just popped up in my mind because I just talked to another driver. Uh, they said that they had issues, uh, you know, that they just couldn't do it at all. If that's the case and they come back to you and just be like, look, I can't get it. I can't do it. Do they get a refund? So, no, they don't get a refund. But let me tell you what we do. This is why our success rate is so good. Um, so if you go to the test, you fail it. Just say you fail it. Okay, well, what we do is, instead of just booking you another test, we charge you 350 every time you fail, right? That's here. We're going over exactly what you failed on. Because if you failed on a maneuver, we need to figure out what got in your head. So we're trying to have you do it. We decipher with the trainers, okay, this is where they're messing up at. So we give you a whole game plan. We reschedule you. You pay the money. You back up there. And most of the time, the student passes on the second try. Because sometimes it's simply they just don't know how to straighten the trailer to go back in the hole. So we give them the whereabouts. Okay, this time this happens, pull up, turn this way, go that way, make it a straight line, back it right back into the hole. All right. That's what's up. That's what's up. Three Withers Trucking School. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you guys for having me. All right. Now you take it easy and I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye-bye.